beautiful people. It's Wonderful Wednesday. I'm April Roll, your ER doctor online and a member of Rodocs. Today, I want to talk to you about shingles. Shingles is something that we see in the ER periodically, um, but I want to today talk about a certain distribution of shingles um, that could um, cause a little more complications than others. So first to start with some background, shingles is caused by varicella zoster virus, which is the same virus that causes chicken pox. And many of you may have had chicken pox as a kid and later in life, you actually can get shingles, um, which could be brought on by stress or, you know, a really bad illness or many other things. So as I said, the varicella zoster virus causes both chicken pox and shingles, which is known as herpes zoster. So basically what happens is um, the person gets chicken pox at some point in their lives, you know, they get the itchy vesicular rash with the little raised um, bubbles on their skin that, you know, break open, they crust, they're itchy, it's a big, you know, pain. Now a days, uh, children are getting the varicella zoster, I mean the varicella zoster virus vaccine. So many young kids nowadays aren't even getting chicken pox. But what happens with people who have had chicken pox is the virus um, can go dormant and basically get into the nerves. And as I said before, whenever the person ends up getting shingles, whether it's because they had a major stress or a major illness, or they're now immunocompromised, they get the shingles rash, which, um, which comes out. And um, basically they have to deal with that and get treated. Um, so I wanna talk about shingles now. When you get the shingles rash, because the virus is pretty much um, attacking the sensory neurons, when the rash comes out, it's usually in a distribution of you know whatever part of the skin that nerve innervates, right? So you'll usually not have shingles crossing the midline. It'll be in one area that that nerve innervates and it'll be on one side of the body. Now, the part that I want to um, focus on today is the distribution involving the face. So if you are a person who ends up developing a rash on the face that is either in this distribution or this distribution, and when I'm saying that, I'm specifically talking about one side of the face that involves pretty much this area of the face, right? So the reason I wanna talk about that is because if you have this painful rash, usually the pain comes before the rash. If you have shingles on this area of your body, that involves a cranial nerve, cranial meaning involving the brain. It involves the cranial nerve that involves the distribution of the eye. So if you're having specifically, as I said, this just distribution of the face, that rash includes your eyelid, you know, your forehead, all of this. If you're having eye pain, headache, um, you know, discomfort in your eye, you definitely want to get to a doctor, to an emergency department, to an ophthalmologist, something, um, some type of facility where you can have your eye examined because if you are having shingles specifically in your eye you're going to need to get IV medications you're going to have to be admitted you're going to have to have further more intense treatment than the basic shingles where you get a cyclovir or valcyclovir um, with steroids and you know something for pain it's much more serious than that because it involves a cranial nerve, again, cranial meaning involving the brain, the virus actually can get deeper into that nerve and actually go into the brain. You actually can get things like encephalitis or meningitis. Um, obviously, you can lose your sight because the um, herpes zoster is affecting the eye itself. 
Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk about this because, you know, some people may not even know what shingles is. And obviously, if you get the rash on this distribution of the face, as I mentioned, um, people obviously may not know that it can infect the eye causing loss of sight, but even more than that, it can cause encephalitis, meningitis. And as you know, or even if you may not know, um, that can lead to death, you know? Um, some symptoms, obviously, headache, um, confusion, um, you know, leading down to coma and death, obviously. So I just wanted to let you know, this is something that can be treated, um, easily treated actually, if you know what to look for. So I definitely wanted to put that information out there that if you are having shingles on the face, including this area, and I'm doing like that because like I said before, it usually does not cross the midline. Um, if you're having this, and especially if you're immunocompromised, meaning that your immune system is weaker than others, and if you fall into this category, or I mean, you would fall into this category if you are elderly, if you're on chemotherapy, if you um, are a transplant recipient and you're on anti-rejection medications, um, if you have an autoimmune disease like lupus or something like that, where you're on chronic steroids or other medications that can put you at, um, you know, put your immune system at a lower um, functioning rate. Um, also, if you have HIV or other medical illnesses where you know that your immune system is not as active as someone without these conditions, you need to be more aware because you are more at risk of getting shingles. And when you get shingles, you're more at risk of getting a more severe type of shingles. So I just wanted to put that information out there. Again, you know, I, I like to let you guys know things um, so that you are better prepared to um, be responsible for your health and just be informed about um, your body and certain conditions that can um, involve your body and put you at, you know, the danger pretty much. So I'm happy for you to be joining me on this wonderful Wednesday. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you found this information helpful, please share this video. If you'd like to hear about any other topics or want me to talk about anything else on any future wonderful Wednesdays, put that in the comment section below. If you'd like to schedule a telemedicine visit with me, please visit rodox.com. I will have that information in the description box. Again, thank you for sharing this wonderful Wednesday with me. Be blessed and stay healthy.